in the early afternoon of the 19th of March 2011, the French President Nicolas Sarkozy appeared on the national TV for an important announcement. France was going to war. Following a United Nations resolution, the French military forces were going to establish a no-fly zone over Libya. Even before Sarkozy's speech, the gears of the French military machine were already turning. At the airbase of Saint-Dizier, a flight of eight Rafale was being prepared for their mission. They took off from the single runway, left the woods and the hills of the Haute Marne behind and turned south, toward the Mediterranean. After meeting a couple of times with the tankers, the pilots started to see the Libyan coast appearing at the horizon. The air defenses were intact. The Libyan Air Force was intact. And both were alert and they were expecting an attack. The Rafales entered the Libyan airspace, destroyed a number of vehicles and tanks being part of the Libyan ground forces, shot down a plane, patrolled western Libya's sky for a few hours, and left unscathed. The Americans and the British will start their operations the following day, but not before having launched about 120 cruise missiles during the night, not before having rendered the Libyan air defenses and the Libyan air force inoperative. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end because the stuff that we discuss here you won't find anywhere else on YouTube. So this is the second video dedicated to the Dassault Rafale. Today we are going to discuss what makes this plane so peculiar and effective. The story that we told at the beginning epitomizes how the French do things differently. The United States and the rest of NATO approaches an air campaign in a rather predictable way. The beginning of the operations is dedicated to destroying the opponents, our defenses and neutralizing the air force. No piloted platform enters the contested airspace if the enemy's air defenses and air forces are not severely degraded, or the platform features some form of stealthiness. No risk is taken unless there are some very particular high-value targets that need to be neutralized, and even so, very reluctantly. The French do it differently. They do not have specialized air defense suppression weapons, and they do not have dedicated electronic warfare platforms. This is the reason why the Rafale packs an unusual punch from this point of view. The French trust the Spectra suite, the built-in electronic warfare suite, to the point of changing the tactics and ignoring the enemy air defenses like they did in Libya. However, let's start from the beginning. Despite the fact that the Rafale is not a stealth plane, a number of measures to reduce the radar cross-section have been taken, particularly from the frontal aspect. The engineer ducts hide the compressor and rather absorbent materials have been used extensively inside the ducts and on the most reflective parts of the plane. Since most of the structure of the plane is made of composites, Unconfirmed news report that the same rather absorbing materials are used behind the composites to screen the bulk of the metallic mass of the plane. And the cockpit has the classic gold film coverage to avoid the radar reflection from the inside. So while the radar cross-section is definitely high and not even comparable with a real stealth plane, it is probably lower than the competitors and this may help in a contested airspace. The other particular element is the data fusion. The French developed a modular architecture and the core systems are formed by a group of modular data processing units. Their software can be easily updated and they perform the core navigation and combat functions, continuously integrating all the data 
and generating a unified visualization on the cockpit screens and the HUD. The Rafale is one of the few platforms that perform true data fusion. The norm for many four-generation planes is to have one screen for each system. One screen shows the radar, the other screen the rather warning receiver, and so on. During the myriad of updates that these planes have received, at some point they may receive a data integration or data fusion package. In this case, the data from all the systems are shown on the same screen, but if the same target is spotted by the radar and the radar warning receiver, the screen shows two different tracks. And this can be very confusing for the pilot who doesn't know how to interpret them. There are various solutions to this problem, but the Rafale is probably the first operational platform with the computing power and the algorithm to deduplicate the tracks. It shows a single coherent picture drawn on screen in eye pleasing pastel colors because, hey, we are French, but this is not the end. Through the Link16 data link, the computer may receive data from either platforms, like other Rafales, OWACs, or even ground stations, or even ground units. These data are automatically integrated to provide a sort of God's view of the battlefield. This is the same feature that is believed to be one of the main, if not the main, quantum leap ahead of the F-35. But as you can see, the French have been there already. To be fair, the F-35 uses a stealth directional data link, safer and definitely more discreet than the general purpose Link 16 used by the Rafale. But the feature is there nonetheless. The level of integration is such that the whole designation process is streamlined to the point that to attack a ground target, only two clicks are necessary. So the plane receives the mission from the OWAX. The pilot reviews the missions and clicks a button on the screen to accept. No radio chatter is required. If the mission is accepted, the weapons are automatically prepared and programmed and the pilot only needs to fly to an attack position. Just clears the computer to engage with another click on the screen and everything else, including the release and the eventual guidance of the weapons, is automatic. The main Rafale sensors are two, the RBE-2 AESA radar and the OSF Erst. The RBA-2 is an AESA radar, relatively powerful, which is believed to be able to intercept a non-stealth fighter-sized track up to 240 kilometers. It performs all the functions of a modern radar, including guiding up to 6 mica against as many targets at the same time. Curiously, despite the integration with the Meteor, which would allow a two-way data link, only a one-way data link has been implemented. The infrared search and track is a credit of good performance and good tolerance to the atmospheric disturbances. It works in two distinct bands, 3.3 to 5 and 8 to 12 micron, integrating the two images for the presentation. Estimates, estimates say that in ideal conditions it can track a fighter-sized target closing toward the plane, so not showing the engines, up to 100 kilometers. The infrared search and track is augmented by a TV camera that let the pilot have a recognizable image of the usual fighter-sized target up to 50 kilometers of distance. This is extremely important because the rules of engagement in modern-day scenarios often require a visual identification of the target before firing. If the visual identification is made at a distance, it is still possible to use the full range of the air-to-air weapons. If the pilot needs to be in visual range and pretty close to identify the target, well, he has basically given up one of the potential advantages. Finally, the TV camera integrates a laser telemeter well, to measure distances, but is also supposed to be used to guide the infrared version of the MICAS at distances beyond the visual range. The Spectra Self-Protection Suite 
is believed to be one of the most advanced in the world. The external components are three radar warning sensors, each one covering about 120 degrees, three laser warning sensors with roughly the same coverage and they actually overlap a little bit, and two infrared missile launch detectors. Using interferometry, these sensors can identify a track direction with less than one degree error, which is enough to provide a completely passive fire solution to the weapons. The output is also integrated with the data of a library of threats and the other sensors to be presented to the pilot in the integrated way that we have discussed before. The Spectra Suite may command automatically uh, chaffs and flare dispensers, but curiously again, uh, no doubt the coil is planned to be integrated with the plane. From the countermeasure point of view, the system has three scrambling channels, whose performance is rigorously secret, but unconfirmed news report something they call active stealth. It is believed to be a form of active rather eco-cancellation, but however, all of this has to be taken with a large, large pinch of salt, like everything in the world of electronic warfare. The Rafale is a very advanced combat plane, probably is the most technologically advanced and capable uh, overall among the generation 4.5 planes and it is very close to the fifth generation. However, it is also the result of a particular approach to combat slightly different than the American doctrine. There are interviews with French pilots where it is clear how their mindset is focused on trying different solutions until they prevail. Thinking out of the box for them is their natural condition and it is what they train for. A French pilot is expected to break the rules and ignore the procedures if it is necessary to come out on top. A French Navy Rafale pilot in an interview released a few years ago said something very interesting. I am obviously just translating and paraphrasing and even a bit dramatizing. There are thousands of people who work for me to put me in the position to take off and execute a mission. But there's only a handful of planes and a handful of pilots. We will always be outnumbered. We will have only a thin margin or none at all. If we do not act smart, if we do not act unexpected, if we don't throw the linear course of action out of the window, we will lose. And we can't afford to lose because there will be nobody else to replace us. The thousands of people who work for me expect me to win. So if you like this video, I'm sure you will find interest in the videos beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And please consider supporting the channel on Patreon and subscribe star, that would be amazing. In the meanwhile, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.